Welcome to the Kevin Dunn Show. Hope you're having a very exciting day. We're excited that you've taken the time out to join us. As always, we have a special guest in the house today. We have Investigator Ham. And when we come back from the commercial break, we're going to be talking about him and his job responsibilities. More of Investigator Ham when we come back on the Kevin Dunn Show. At Charter Bank, you get totally free checking with online statements. You betcha. Free mobile banking, free online banking, free online bill pay, free debit card, even a new account gift, free. At Charter Bank, we're here to wow you. And totally free checking is just the beginning. Come see us or open online at charterbank.net. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Now bigger and better, America's Mattress in LaGrange has moved on up to a new location with new store hours located at 1300 Lafayette Parkway with greater selections, greater inventory, greater prices featuring the Serta Perfect Sleeper, iComfort, the iSeries, and much, much more. The America's Mattress line also offers a variety of comfort features in select models that give you the comfort and support you need all at an affordable price. Come visit our new large showroom located at 1300 Lafayette Parkway. Welcome back to the Kevin Dunn Show. Our special guest today is Ray Ham. How are you doing, man? Doing great, Kevin. Good and to be here. And I know I say a lot of our guests are very busy, but I know that you are very, very, <laughs> very busy. Uh, tell our audience, what, what is your uh, job title? Sure, I'm, a, I'm an investigator with the LaGrange Police Department. Uh, I'm assigned to the Special Investigations Unit. Um, that works under our supervisor, Mark Cavender, Sergeant Cavender. Mm -hmm. uh, there's currently four of us assigned in that unit, and we do uh, investigations as it relates to uh, illegal drugs, uh, criminal street gangs, any of the vices, prostitution, alcohol offenses, and things like that. So you work in the book of the crime area when, uh, when you say it, it seems that way. <laughs> it seems that way. It seems that way. Uh, now, Ray, tell us what what is what what is a gang? What, what you know what, when when someone classifies. As, as a gang, what, what are they saying? Well, I, when people ask that question, Kevin, I kind of refer to it as, um, I, I kind of refer them to the law. The, 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 the code section of Georgia mm -hmm. says that a criminal street gang is, is three or more people that associate themselves and commit criminal gang activity. Mm -hmm. Weapons offenses, narcotics offenses, personal on person crimes, mm -hmm. uh, personal property crimes, breaking into someone's home, mm -hmm. breaking into their car. And those three or four more people can be identified with a common sign, symbol, name, tattoo, mm -hmm. graffiti. Uh, mm -hmm. They call themselves something. They associate themselves with this group. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, they commit these crimes that the state of Georgia calls criminal gang activity. And it's mm -hmm. those crimes that we just talked about. Mm -hmm. And they do that to increase their status. They do that to increase their membership or enhance their status or the status of the gang. So when that takes place, uh, the law says then that's a criminal street gang, and that is a prosecutable offense under the state statute. So a street gang is defined by the law, not necessarily a def definition. Right. Okay. And there's a lot of definitions okay. out there. Um, okay. Most of your viewers are probably like middle America. They, mm -hmm. they, they think, well, when they hear the word gang, they mm -hmm. might say a gang is this, or right. I think of a gang as this, or I watch History Channel, or A&E, or mm -hmm. Gangland. Right. I know this is what constitutes a gang. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of truth to those shows, but in actuality, the law is very clear. If someone commits a gang crime or an mm -hmm. activity that we talked about, mm -hmm. uh, narcotics or weapons violations or personal on person crimes, mm -hmm. and they do so to increase their, their membership in an organization, mm -hmm. um, then that's a gang crime. And as well as the charge that they're being charged with, say if it's... Um, a firearm or breaking into a home, they're mm -hmm. also charged with a gang crime on top of that because they do it while being a gang member and increasing their status. Okay. I'm going to throw out a crazy question to That's you. Right. Is, there, is there a such thing as a positive gang? <laughs> well, I would like to think so because not all gangs are criminal. Okay. Um, for instance, there's organizations, civic organizations, uh -huh. uh, community groups um, that associate themselves with a common name or maybe wear a uniform. Mm -hmm. You know, and I kind of 
um, bring people back to reality and like the Boy Scouts or the Girl Scouts or okay, the Kiwanis can, Club okay. or the Rotary Club. That's uh -huh. an organization, a civic organization, mm -hmm. but that's an organization mm -hmm. that use a common name, they have a uniform or they use a common moniker. Mm -hmm. um, but the definition distinguishment here is it's a group that commits criminal, criminal activity, activity right. versus a group that does good. There are several community groups in our area, um, community action groups that do some great good. Mm -hmm. uh, positive enforcement for kids going back to school with book bags, uh, helping right. out the needy in, the, in, the, in your neighborhood. Uh, the neighborhood watch group, for instance, that assists law enforcement with maybe suspicious activity or suspects in your new. Mm -hmm. So there are community groups that are good. Do they meet the criteria of a gang? Well, it's three or more people. They associate themselves with some type of thing. The, the difference is, really, right. that, that tilts the stale, scales is, do they commit activity, criminal gang activity, in furtherance of the gang? Okay. And so, yeah, there are positive groups out there. Uh, okay. I, I'm kind of hesitant to call them gangs, but sometimes that has a negative connotation to exactly. it. Exactly, exactly. Um, okay. Now, um, we've... A lot of attention has been focused on gangs uh, mm -hmm. within the last three or four years, but how, how long do you think gangs have been really in existence in small towns like Lynette Valley, LaGrange, West sure. Point? Um, well, you know, you can trace criminal street gangs back to the beginning of this country when immigrants were coming over from this country and they associated and grouped together mm -hmm. from their own region of the world. They spoke mm -hmm. the same language. They wanted to police themselves um, back in the streets of New York. Um, gangs have been around for hundreds of years. As far as our small communities go, mm -hmm. uh, I can only speak about LaGrange and the West Georgia region. I, I like talking about our region, region. of West Georgia more mm -hmm. so than the city mm -hmm. um, because, you know, criminal criminal gang members or, or criminals don't know s city limits. They don't know the state border. Mm -hmm. um, they'll drive from West Point to La Valley or West Point to Lynette or across to Roanoke on Highway uh, 431 and they don't care that they're in another state. They're looking for okay. a crime of opportunity. Right. So when I talk about gangs in our city, I like talking about our region. Mm -hmm. I would like to think that our intelligence leads us to believe that there have been organizations or people grouping themselves together for a common purpose of committing a crime mm -hmm. operating in our region for at least 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, some intelligence leads us to believe probably 15 years or more. Wow. Um, wow. So <laughs> again, it's when, when you look at it, there's mm -hmm. no sense in playing the ostrich effect of <laughs> sticking our head in the sand and saying crime doesn't happen. Exactly. I mean, we're all victims of crime in some way. Exactly. And uh, so what it is is we face it head on. Uh, we call it what it is, and we address those criminal behaviors. Okay. Now, out of all the crimes that, and I know this is uh, a, a figure you probably can't give exact numbers on, but out of all the crimes that are committed, what, what percentage of crimes committed are, are gang-related, if you could... Well, in 2013, mm -hmm. the FBI put out a criminal street gang threat assessment. They did in 2009, they did in 2011, and now in 2013, um, there are some numbers floating around out there. Mm -hmm. As it relates to the FBI criminal street gang threat assessment, in 2011, they said somewhere between 60% and 90% of all violent crimes mm -hmm. were committed by criminal street gang members. Wow. Now, that's an alarming number. It really especially is. Especially when you get into the 90%. Uh -huh. So looking back in the last couple of years of some statistics just within our department, um, we can safely say that somewhere around 75% of mm. all of our illegal drug sales, mm -hmm. all of our personal person crimes, mm -hmm. all of our person on property, breaking into autos, mm -hmm. breaking into someone's home, stealing something out of their shed out back. If you, if you label that as criminal gang activity, we can, we can conservatively say that about 75% of all these crimes are committed by criminal street gang members. Wow. And that's a significant amount. Because remember, what's the culture of a criminal street gang? The culture of a criminal street gang is that these members must put work in. They mm -hmm. must commit these acts exactly. to increase their status right. and increase the gang status. Mm -hmm. um, so those numbers seem alarmingly high, mm -hmm. um, but that's what gangs do. They okay. commit crime. Mm -hmm. They're trying to increase their reputation. Okay. So explain to us, Ray, um, what is the recruiting process uh, for recruiting gang, for gang members to recruit other members? Is, is I'm glad you asked that, Kevin. There, mm -hmm. There's a lot of times that family members see their, their teenagers or their young child or their, maybe their nephew or their niece flirting around with some things, maybe mm -hmm. throwing a hand sign or writing weird stuff on a piece of paper mm -hmm. and we know that as a gang code or, and they start seeing these things mm -hmm. and they just don't know what they are and uh, those parents and family members and educators need to be educated. Right. This is what you see when you see this. Mm -hmm. um, the recruitment process I, I've, I can only gain, not from firsthand experience, but from what I've been told during interviews with mm -hmm. gang members, mm -hmm. is can start as early as 13 years old, 14 wow. years old, indoctrinate those young 
uh, adolescence and preteens and early teenage years mm -hmm. with this is what you have to do to survive on the street. This mm -hmm. is what you have to do to be successful mm -hmm. and make money in, in life. And um, when you teach a 13 or 14 year old that, and you show them hundreds of dollars, or you show them a wad of 20s and say, this is what you can make today if you'll just work for us or do what I tell you to do. Wow. That's very enticing, exactly. very enticing. So the recruiting process can be as simple as just giving them drugs to sell or asking them to go down here and see if a car is unlocked okay. and steal the change cup out of it. Mm. Um, we've had criminals break into cars, catch, it, catch a car slipping is what they term they use, that a door handle's unlocked and steal right. nothing more than a change cup full of change. Mm. And if it's a young teenager, um, that's exciting to them, that's enticing. And uh, that can be an recruitment, recruitment process, it can be a recruitment tool for them. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we've, we have found. Okay. Now, what are three main, if, I know there are several reasons, but what, mm -hmm. what are three main reasons that, that people want to join a gang, those 13 years old? I know you said the money and all of that, but are, are there any other reasons that, that well, makes them want to become, become a part of a gang? Counselors over the years have, have narrowed it down to really eight main reasons that a, a, a person joins a gang. Mm -hmm. And instead of just breaking them down in, in all eight numbers, well, I think I want to talk to you, since you said three, about the three most important. Okay, that's good. And the first that I have found in talking to these individuals once they get into this lifestyle mm -hmm. is they joined it because they just needed an identity. They needed a place to belong. Sadly, the home structure in our country today mm. has left that out right, right. in the raising of the child. Mm. Um, they've, they've, they forgot to teach this child, the, number one, the importance of life, and number two, the importance of finding yourself. And a criminal street gang is going to do just that. Wow. They're going to give these young people an identity. They're going to give them a place to belong. Um, if a young man doesn't uh, have the home structure and the nurturing from a raising family, whether it's a uh -huh. mother and father or a mother or grandmother or aunt or uncle mm -hmm. or neighbors that care about that child and are invested in that child, then that child at, a, at as early as 12 or 13 years old, they're going to reach out to the streets. They're going right. to reach out to someone that cares about them mm -hmm. and that can provide that structure to them. Mm -hmm. So um, identity is probably the number one reason. They're looking for a place to belong. Okay. And so it, you said there were probably two others? Sure, family involvement, family involvement. is closely related to that. Okay. I, I call it number two. Number two, okay. Um, if, if, a, if a young person wants to join a gang, okay. and they want to enjoy, uh, join a criminal street gang, and their family, or maybe they have a distant family member that's already a member of a criminal organization. Okay, okay, okay. Um, that family involvement is easy to grab that person. Nowadays, young men, especially playing sports at 13 and 14 years old, can be six foot tall and mm. already the size of a full-grown man. Mm -hmm. And uh, gang members, specifically leaders and recruiters, they look for these individuals. They look for those people that have developed early physically-wise. Right. Wow. And they will use that. They Never will teach these that. people to be uh, intimidators on the street. They'll teach them how to break into a house. They'll teach them how to break into a car. And so if you can influence your own family member, mm -hmm. a nephew, mm -hmm. a younger brother, or a younger sister to do that, um, it's a lifestyle they grow up in. And wow. so not only is that child looking for a place, an identity, a place to belong, but they're looking at an older family member who might be a role model to them. Mm -hmm. And they see that family member driving a nice car, or wearing nice clothes, and not having to get up and support a family mm. with, a, with a reputable <laughs> job, mm -hmm. a law-abiding citizen type thing, a productive member of society. Mm -hmm. And they say, I want that lifestyle. And uh, they have a, the wrong role model right. in their home or in their family. And then Easy. thirdly, to round out the top three, I think is just money. Um, money. Our society money. is so uh, hell-bent nowadays on the almighty dollar. It's all about money over everything. It's about what can I do to get rich now? And we've kind of set to the back seat the work ethic of right. doing a good job mm -hmm. and being known for that. Mm -hmm. It's all about how much am I going to get paid for this? And good. so kids that grow up in families that are socioeconomically disadvantaged mm -hmm. and they see mm -hmm. the money that can flow in from illegal drug sales okay. or catching a car slipping or breaking into a house and stealing a TV, mm -hmm. they see that and they say, you know what, I can make a lot of money doing this and only work a few hours a day. Wow. Um, and so that, that money is a huge exactly. drive to these early teenagers. Okay. All right, Ray, we're going to have to pause and take a sure. quick commercial break. When we come back from the commercial break, we're going to be asking Ray, what are some signs that are noticeable to, to let us know that a, a male or female is in a gang? More Ray Ham on The Kevin Dunn Show. Great. You have pain, we have solutions. Total Healthcare of LaGrange Joint Restoration Program specializes in providing electrical stimulation and injections to get rid of your knee and shoulder pain. Total Healthcare's injections, hips and repair ligaments, taking away all of your knee pain within five to seven weeks. 
We offer special braces and supports to assist you, and we are now accepting Medicare with payment plans as low as $20 per month. If your joints need lubricating and you desire to regain mobility of your knee free of pain, Total Health Care can make you new all over again. Life in the country is a conscious choice. And with that choice comes hard work, attention to detail, and investing in the right tools to keep your home or farm at its best. So why choose anything but the very best zero turns on the market today? Xmark. Known for their durability, precision cut, and time-saving performance, Xmarks are the preferred brand of mowing equipment for the landscape professional and people like you who take pride in their lawn. For special pricing incentives, visit xmark.com or your local dealer. It's the 500 Truck Challenge at the Truck Super Center for the entire Southeast. The all-new Opelika Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Opelika Ford. 500 trucks at the guaranteed lowest prices. Find the lower advertised price and we'll beat it by at least $500. Plus, we'll donate to ALS for every vehicle sold. New trucks, $10,000 off at the 500 Truck Challenge. Folks, you've just got to see this place. The all-new Opelika Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Opelika Ford. Just 25 minutes from Columbus. Welcome back to the Kevin Dunn Show, where we're talking with investigator Ray Ham, and we're talking about gang activity, and he's uh, enlightening us on uh, some valuable information. Uh, the next question, Ray, is I want to ask you, how, what are some signs to, um, to look for or, or that we can see that would suggest that a male or female is involved with a gang? Well, I, I think the first thing that, that parents and family members and, and school teachers and loved ones in general, neighbors even, can look at in a young man and woman if they're mm -hmm. starting to be influenced is behavioral changes. Mm -hmm. um, we all know that that age 11, 12, 13, their body, young bodies are mm -hmm. going through a huge change. But even 17, 18 year olds, uh, maybe they used to be diligent at wanting to find a job or diligent at school or diligent in caring about their neighborhood, mm -hmm. all of a sudden has had a behavioral change. Um, they're, they're seeming to be carelessness. They're, they seem to not care. They seem mm -hmm. to be getting in trouble more often. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would watch for behavioral changes. And then if you start to see those things, then I would start watching for a circle of friends to change. Mm -hmm. Is there a new friend in the, in the mix? Mm -hmm. uh, are they bringing a, a new friend around that's influencing them, especially when kids get their license and start to drive? Right. Are they now um, transporting people back and forth, providing a ride to somebody that normally is not in their circle of friends or mm -hmm. your family doesn't know? Mm. So I would watch for behavioral changes and, and new friends. A lot of time a gang recruiter or somebody in the neighborhood that can be as young as 17, 18 years old mm -hmm. and that it's trying to build some younger members up underneath him or her, uh, they, will, they will befriend young kids that seemingly don't have a way in life or influence mm -hmm. in the home. And so all of a sudden, family members or, or neighbors will start to see this stranger uh, right. hanging around this young child mm -hmm. and you'll, or the teenager or 16 and mm -hmm. even 18-year-old. Mm -hmm. um, they might go to work somewhere and actually good, get a good job. And uh -huh. all of a sudden, somewhere at work, they meet somebody uh -huh. that's putting a bug in their ear about a way to make serious, serious money, money, good mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. And so watch for new friends. Um, watch for getting in trouble. Mm -hmm. um, the school system, we, we speak to the school systems. I've had an opportunity okay. to speak in just about every Troop County school. That's good. Through all the high schools, all the way down to elementaries. And I, and mm -hmm. I tell our teachers to be engaged in mm -hmm. a child's life, mm -hmm. not just about getting ready for a CRCT or not just getting ready for a test, That's good. but be engaged good. in their life. Watch for key behavioral changes in their life. And so I would also springboard that to your audience, Kevin, mm -hmm. um, for your family. Watch for your child. Be engaged in their life. Ask questions. If you mm -hmm. see something, mm -hmm. don't just make a mental note in the back. Mm -hmm. Ask questions. Hey, why are you doing this? Who's this person I see you hanging around in the afternoons now? Mm -hmm. After football practice or after cheerleading, I don't see you want to do this. I see you wanting to do this. Mm -hmm. Who is this person? What? Where did you meet them? Right. Ask questions. I think the more engaged that a parent gets in their child's life, yes, sir. the more cracks are filled and the less that child will have room for negative influences to come in. That's good. And so behavioral changes is huge. If you see a, a, your son or daughter trying to make a funny hand sign, okay. or if you see them expressing a huge interest in a TV program, whether it's on the internet through YouTube or on the television, that, that deals with criminal behavior, mm -hmm. uh, like for instance, gangland, or constantly watching a music video uh -huh. that, that glorifies drugs and shooting and killings and the gang lifestyle, that's a huge red flag. Okay. Um, someone asked me, Kevin, recently, what, what do you contribute the largest 
uh, what do you say is the largest con contribution factor to mm -hmm. the teens in the last seven or eight years as mm -hmm. it relates to criminal street gangs? Mm -hmm. And I pull out my cell phone and I say this thing right here. <laughs> uh, you know, a cell phone nowadays, a smartphone can right. let you access anything in the World Wide Web. So I can look at stuff from overseas or New York or California or Chicago mm -hmm. and or Atlanta mm -hmm. with just a couple of finger, finger buttons. And so teens have gained on that. They're starting to uh, educate themselves in criminal behavior just by pulling it up on the internet. Mm -hmm. So parents, if you pay the phone bill and you're in charge of your child's life, exactly. be engaged <laughs> be in what engaged. they're watching on their smartphone. Um, we encourage teachers to do that if they have smartphones at school, be engaged. Okay. Um, because just with an inbox message or an email, they can threaten somebody or be threatened themselves. Wow. And so we're encouraging to you know, stay active in your child's life. Now, is, is, is it easy for, just, just say if you get into a gang and uh, you're tired of it mm -hmm. and you want to, okay, this, this is not the lifestyle for me, is it easy to get out of a gang? Good question. I get that asked a lot from our educators. Um, and we, as police officers, we just don't prosecute or investigate gang members. I always give my gang guys or girls that have a chance to sit in front of me in an interview or I meet on the street, I will give them an opportunity to ask for help or reach out for help. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm not about filling the prison systems up with gang members because all they're going to do when they go to prison, history has showed us, is they're going to become a better criminal. Hmm. Because if you put, put them in a pod with other criminals, they're going to learn what they did wrong the first time, and it makes them a little harder to catch the second time. Never thought about that. If wow. we can keep kids in, on the right path and give them a way out of this lifestyle, um, I think we owe, owe it to our community to do that. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to write a warrant or mm -hmm. to take someone to court and say, I'm going to prosecute you as a gang member, mm -hmm. and then to never reach down a hand. You know, we've all fell in the ditch before. Exactly. And I'm glad there's always someone there to hold a, hold a hand down to us and say, hey, let me help you out. And so what I tell our, our people that are involved in this lifestyle is, look, I will do all I can humanly possibly do That's good. to try to get you a job, to try to call West Georgia Tech or some of our other outlets and get mm. you your GED and get you started on the path of becoming a profitable and productive citizen in our society. Mm -hmm. um, but doing crime is not it. It's not it. And if you want help, there's help available. Um, I have counselors that have given me their phone numbers and said, mm -hmm. hey, um, if you ever have somebody want to talk, I'll talk to them. I'll talk to them knee to knee. I'll spend 15 minutes on a Sunday afternoon talking to them. And so I have conveyed that to several people. And mm -hmm. you know what? A couple mm -hmm. of them have taken me up on that. That's good. And so we're encouraging them. We're helping them get their GED. And that's not something that's in my job description. Okay. Um, but our city leaders and, a, uh, our, and our elected officials and our, and our law enforcement command staff knows that if we can deter crime, if we can be community oriented in reaching out to these kids, mm -hmm. um, then we have a chance of reaching them. It's, uh, it's not job security to us to say, exactly. let's send them to prison mm -hmm. because when they get out, we're gonna lock them back up. Uh, that's no fun. That doesn't make our streets any safer. That makes a lot of sense. And that leads into the next question I was going to ask you. What, what can communities, uh, schools, right. churches uh, do to help combat gang activity? Good. One of my favorite things to do is talk to uh, church groups. Uh, and I've had a chance to speak to several church groups through either vacation Bible schools or youth groups or just the congregation as a whole mm -hmm. on maybe an off Sunday type of meeting, a Thursday night or a Friday night meeting. And I always jump on that chance. And so if you're out there and if you're a clergy member or, or a pastor or a deacon or something at a church and you want someone to talk to you, I'd be more than happy to come and talk to you. That's but nice. I, I encourage churches to get involved because, you know, our families learn how to be whole units from the church. Now, regardless of what religion you practice, we all need some type hmm. of spiritual help. We all need some type of help and direction in our lives. And I think our churches, um, it's time for them to step up to the plate. It's time for them to step up and provide some counseling or some education to our family members about how to do this. You know, uh, little Johnny or little Susie was in church until they were 12 years old exactly. and always attended Sunday school and all of a sudden um, we haven't seen them in five years. They're 17 and now they're on the front page of the paper committing a horrible crime. Mm. You know, what happened to that five year period? Mm. I say let's not go back to when they were 16. I say let's go back to when they were 12. Mm. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to teaching parents. This is what you have to do when you have a child growing in today's community. Um, our streets are sometimes not the safest place for a 12-year-old to hang out for mm -hmm. hours upon hours. Exactly. And so I, I tell our parents that. 
Be engaged in your child's after school life. You know, sometimes in our work community where it takes two incomes to create a home and, mm -hmm. and survive, I understand that in mm -hmm. our economy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have to have somebody to help watch our kids in the afternoon after school right. if an after school program is not available. So I encourage parents and churches to say, let's get in and talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, there are workshops you can, you can have come into your church. There are educational programs that someone can come in and teach mm -hmm. with a six or eight week course on teaching parents how to how to raise their kids um, after school, mm -hmm. what to watch for. Mm -hmm. um, and so I encourage parents to get involved in that. It's, it's so important to nip it in the bud. Now exactly. we still have the crime that we've mm -hmm. got to deal with. We mm -hmm. still have people that are involved in these gang lifestyle we have mm -hmm. to address mm -hmm. as law enforcement. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm all about preventive. I'm all about prevention. All but, okay, okay. Now uh, we may have time for one more sure. uh, question. Um, is, is there enough law enforcement to minimize this problem? Yes, the city of LaGrange um, has somewhere around 10 officers, uh, sometimes as many as 12 officers patrolling. And our county um, is doing a great job in patrolling our county. Because like I said, if we're gonna talk about criminal behavior and criminal gangs, you can't mm -hmm. stop at the city limits. Mm -hmm. um, I know West Point and Hogansville both have new police chiefs that have come on this year. Right. And Valley and Lynette and Chambers County and Heard County and Merriweather County. Mm -hmm. I, I have met with all these law enforcement people one way or another in the last couple of years mm -hmm. de dealing with criminal street gangs. And they are all committed mm -hmm. to nipping this in the bud. They're all committed to effective, fast response to crimes as it relates to gang crimes. So I would say yes. Um, if there's anything law enforcement can do, um, probably better than what we've been doing, okay. and that is to just maybe recognize gang signs and gang behavior a little quicker. Even myself, mm -hmm. I constantly educate myself. Mm -hmm. I educate myself by further education, learning more what the new trends are. Mm -hmm. uh, I go on YouTube, I watch videos. Mm -hmm. I'm constantly going to training. The Special Investigations Unit attend hundreds of hours of training a year mm -hmm. to bring us up to date. So law enforcement just needs to stay up to date. To stay up to date on, on criminal procedures, mm -hmm. criminal behavior. What's the changing trends with the smartphones nowadays and social medias? Um, that's liable to change tomorrow. What might be trending last <laughs> week will be different uh -huh. next week. And so we, as law enforcement, probably could do a better job on staying what's what's coming up. Okay. What what the future holds. Okay. Well, Ray, that sounds good, man. We are out of time. Okay. Uh, Great. We thank you so much for sharing with us and being a part of uh, the Kevin Dunn Show. I know a lot of our listeners. Uh, have been educated and informed. And do, do you guys have a, before we leave, do you have a special number if, or, or contact, if, if someone needs to contact you? Absolutely, you can go to the city's website, which is lagrangega.org, and there's a link on there for the city police department, where if they'd like to talk to somebody with a special investigations unit, you can always call us at 706-883-2603. That's 883-2603, or the city's website is okay. lagrangega.org, and there's a link on there where you can get us. All right. Well, Ray, thank you so much, man, for your time. And Great. if you need Ray, call him. He will be a big help to you. He's uh, very compassionate. And he's very caring. And uh, I'd like to also let you know if there's a topic that you would like to see discussed on The Kevin Dunn Show, please email us at the Kevin Dunn Show at WJCNTV.com. We thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.